Eight, it's Isaiah Griffin, Jake O'Neal, Connor Hollenbeck, Dylan Darling, who we mentioned in the pregame, and Evan Ott. Yeah, a very old lineup for USC. Desmond Claude, the youngest, sitting at a junior, while the Bengals have a freshman in their starting lineup. Well, there's St. Thomas mentioned he has already played three times against Idaho State. Our three officials today, Paul Skells, Keith Kimball, and Bianca Burns with the basketball, we're ready to go. Game two of the regular season, up it goes and away we go in game two. And Dylan Darling with the basketball for Idaho State. A skip inside for O'Neal. Works on Elohim, the freshman. Swings around the arc for Otten. A ton of transfers on both sides for USC and Idaho State. Shot clock is at five. It's a three ball from Griffin, and it goes to begin the game. That was great defense from Desmond Claude. He got a hand up. Just a great shot there from Idaho State. And they will need to make shots tonight. Really struggled to shoot the ball against Arizona State. Pass intended for Cohen, deflected into the corner for Abo. Looks for help and sends it back to Claude. Trojans letting the shot clock dwindle. Cohen goes to work. The former Minuteman fouled and finishes. USC with some good movement on that possession, but he did a good job of securing the and one. And Josh Cohen really provides a scoring look inside that USC has not had in the last couple seasons, Thomas. Standing at six foot ten, he's a big guy down there. Off on the free throw, just a 70% free throw shooter last year. And the Trojans trail by a point. And a foul away from the basketball. It's on Chabuzo Abo. USC wanted the moving screen call there, it seems, but it does go against the Trojans on the foul. Mentioned Idaho State struggles scoring the basketball against Arizona State. They scored just 48 points as O'Neal drives inside, can't get it to go, offensive board for Otten, and he puts it back up and in, 5-2, the Bengals lead. Idaho State shot 25% from the field against ASU in their season opener. And an early sample size, but looking to be much better on shot selection so far tonight. USC looking to answer. Claude works on Darling, skips it, Cohen. And he has back-to-back -back buckets for the Trojans. And they're back down one. Well, that 25% shooting for Idaho State was their worst mark in a game since 2012. As the Trojans try and take it away, a jump ball. Possession arrow points towards USC, and USC gets it back. And Josh Cohen doing some great work there on the court, already with the four points. That matches his total from the game against Chattanooga, and he secured that loose ball there. A first-team selection in the A-10 a year ago, averaged 16 points per game there. Here's St. Thomas, swings it to the corner, Elohim the pump fake, the pull up, and he hits, and the Trojans have their first lead of the game. Some very quick movement there from the Trojans, no one holding the ball for that long. And they find Elohim, a true freshman who played well in the opener. A triple from Griffin, this time off the mark. USC able to save it. And in Eric Musselman fashion, looking to push the pace, St. Thomas kicks. Elohim, extra pass, Abo. That time it rattles around and out. Abo was a good three-point shooter against Chattanooga. We'll see if he can pick it back up tonight. Here's Dylan Darling, the Washington State transfer. Initially committed to Idaho State, got a late offer from Wazoo, but he's back with the Bengals. Pull up jumper from Griffin. Hits backboard and the rim, but doesn't fall. Abo again, an air ball too strong. And Idaho State with a chance to take the lead, a foul on St. Thomas. It's his first team's second. He did not think he hit the body 
of that Idaho State player, but it did fact slap his arm as he was trying to go for the ball. That was Dylan Darling mentioned. Spent two seasons at Washington State, but missed most of last year with an injury. His head coach Kyle Smith last year called him a guy who just plays incredibly hard inside the lane, hauling back. His pull up jumper hits the heel and Gophers out. USC the other way. Thomas working on Griffin. Finds Cohen, up for the hook shot, crawls over the rim. Early on in this one, the Trojans have been good on the glass, but not the offensive glass so far tonight. Only one offensive rebound in this game as Jake O'Neill walks. It was Idaho State who picked it up. And here comes Matt Noling, the yield transfer into the game. As Noling Abo a checks out. Noling had a very good game against Chattanooga. 13 points off the bench, and Musselman in the post-game press conference called Noling the closer. He likes bringing him off the bench because he can be that all-around reliever for USC. Not just in double figures scoring with six of six from the field. Cohen with his third basket for USC. He has an early six, and USC leads 8-5. Trojans getting scoring inside from their big man early. Griffin takes on St. Thomas. These two battled a season ago when Thomas was at Northern Colorado, and Griffin throws it away. And that will take us to our first break. Josh Cohen with six points. Trojans on a 6-0 run. And USC leads 8-5 with 15.33 to go in the first. We'll be right back on Big Ten Plus. Galen Center, 15-33 to go here in the first half. And USC leads 8-5. Take a look at Idaho State and their coaching staff. Trojans with the basketball out of the break. Josh Cohen, six of the eight points. Elohim on the wing. Looks for Thomas. Griffin picks him up in the game at Idaho State last year as Thomas steps through, can't hit the floater. And then the foul goes on Connor Hollenbeck, so it keeps the ball with USC. But at the game at Idaho State, St. Thomas had 28 points against the Bengals in a two-point win. Griffin was his primary defender in the first half. Claude, spin move inside and spins right away and picks up the bucket. Nifty move by Desmond Claude and USC doubling up the Bengals 10 to five. First points for Claude and tonight after a nine point performance against Chattanooga. Last year averaged 16 and a half points per game for Xavier, another turnover on Idaho State. They've gone scoreless over the last four minutes and the Trojans on an 8-0 run. And a similar story for Idaho State. They had a strong start to this one, but now the Trojans have really come up and now lead by five. The USC will look to extend that lead. Claude walks and turns it over on the travel. And it goes right back to Idaho State as Elohim takes the seat and Wesley Yates checks in for the first time. A.J. Bergen in for Idaho State as well. USC putting a lot of pressure in the backcourt here. Picking up Dylan Darling. Hollenbeck. The big man Dabberco. 
pass deflected. Trojans have caused problems for Idaho State. A couple turnovers in the last two trips and a foul on Desmond Claude. It's his first, team's third. Jackson Green comes in. Eastern Oklahoma transfer. Both these teams have plenty of new faces. Bergen thinks about the step back. Lob inside taken away. It's Yates with the steal. Coasts the other way and gets fouled. Instant impact from Wesley Yates, the transfer from Washington, coming into the game, getting that steal, and then drawing the foul in transition. And he goes to the line for a pair of free throws. Darling commits the foul. Well, last year at Yates, he had to redshirt, missed all of last season with an injury, but when he was healthy, former Washington assistant, now USC assistant, Will Conroy, called him one of the best players on that Huskies roster. And Yates, one of the younger players on this team, bringing a little bit of youth to this roster that is dominated by graduates and seniors. Uh, Yates, two for two from the line. Red shirt freshman on the board. The Trojans put the press on. Pounding defense. Darling through traffic. Claude picks up the foul and it's his second. And here comes St. Thomas to check back in, likely taking Claude out. Two early fouls. A tough shooting day for Dylan Darling against Arizona State, but he did go six for six from the free throw line, getting a couple more opportunities here. Southpaw looking to end a 10-0 run for the Trojans. And he does with the first. Darling grew up in Spokane. His dad, a star linebacker at Washington State, dreamed to go there, did go there. But once Kyle Smith left to go to Stanford, he hit the transfer portal. And now at Idaho State, where he initially committed in high school. Thomas the basketball for USC, swings it into the corner. Shelley the freshman, back up to Thomas. Looks for a lane, AG to Noling. Runs to the rim, lays it in, the hoop plus the harm. And what's different about this USC squad from years past is they're moving the ball very, very quickly. We could see offenses under former head coach Andy Edfield get a little bit stagnant, but there, Noling doing a good job getting the rock and immediately driving towards the basket and drawing the and one. Part of the reason we saw so many players contribute in that season opening win. Wasn't anyone scoring 25 as an offensive rebound for AG off the missed free throw, but plenty of players in double figures. AG looking for a back cut for Thomas. Underneath the hoop, dishes Shelley, another and one for USC. Great passing yet again on another possession. Trojans keeping it in the offensive end, getting the rebound on the missed free throw, and then drawing yet another and one. And no one for Idaho State picks up the back cut from Jalen Shelley, and that's his first collegiate basket. For the true freshman, he can't hit the free throw either. USC two of five from the stripe so far, but they lead by nine. Darling off the dribble, loses the handle and USC takes it away. Thomas finds Noling, can't finish on the layup out of bounds and back to Idaho State. Another great pass, but Noling unable to score. That's a tough shot trying to go on the back end of the basket. Just not able to get it there in time. USC applying the pressure. Eric Musselman on this sideline as energetic as ever. That's what you expect when the must bus is your coach. There's never a lack of energy 
And Eric Musselman is in the building. That has been the case from Nevada to Arkansas. You can see him right there. O'Neal inside, it drops it off. They say wave off the basket. A blocking foul. Goes on AG. Evan Otten had the throwdown, but before the dunk, let's take another look. That is close to being a charge. Thomas is on AG right there in the middle. And we saw Jalen Shelley kind of dive into St. Thomas's legs. And Thomas was slow to get up from the court, staying in the game though. Still in there. So the foul actually wipes away an Idaho State basket. Fight for the basketball, Nolan goes down hard. Trojans with the steal. Thomas to Nolan, blocked off the backboard. A.J. Bergen skies high. Bengals haven't hit a field goal in the last six and a half minutes. Inside, and Otten can't catch it. And back to USC. Turnover number eight on the Bengals, and that takes us to a break. The USC leads by nine, 16-7 the lead, with 11.59 to go in the first. Be right back on Big Ten Plus. for USC to prevent that from happening again. And they gotta keep Idaho State off the free throw line. Bengals did a good job of making those freebies against the Sun Devils. Wow, and you mentioned Idaho State needing to shoot the ball better. They're shooting it slightly better, 33%, but they've only taken six shots because they've turned the ball over eight times in the early going. USC has over double the shots that Idaho State does. St. Thomas down the alley, feeds underneath, AG the layup. Trojans with their largest lead of the night so far, it sits at 11. And Thomas could have taken the shot there, but made the unselfish play of dumping it off and getting the easy basket. It's a third 6-0 run for the Trojans here in this first half. Griffin almost has his pocket picked. Kicks to the corner. O'Neal the pump fake. The Euro step inside. Thomas pokes it away. Shot clock at two. And USC able to get possession. A little bit of a tangle Tro over on the floor. Trojans playing with some energy in this first half. You see it from Jalen Shelley there and Rayshon Ag. Getting on the floor to secure that loose ball. Our refs are gonna actually take a look. They started to resume play, but they're gonna take a look and you wonder if they're looking at whether there was anything extra. Foul goes on Isaiah Griffin and we'll see if that's all they're looking at. Or if they're also going to look at if there was anything extra during that little skirmish. That can happen when there's a player on the floor and shoes coming out. You wonder, maybe there's a little bit of stomping action. And it looks like they were just looking at who the foul's on and you see that grab around the neck of AG. That's where the foul was. USC, a 6-0 run, an 11-point lead here in the first. Thomas to EG. Tries to dish it to the corner. Shelley underneath Noling. Ball flying around. Six on the shot clock. Trojans have to hurry. Shelley with two to the cup and fouled again. Great game presence there to notice that the shot clock is coming down. 
even though he didn't really get a shot off, he drew the foul. And a little hobbled coming up from that attempted lay-in. They're right, it was a nice drive, had to get busy and did just that, but hope his ankle's all right. And Shelly off on the free throw. Well, USC shooting 57% from the field, but they're 0 of 2 from 3, and they're now 2 of 6 from the line. Something the Trojans, albeit an entirely different roster, struggled with last season. Shot 69% from the stripe as Shelly makes the second and limps out. Shibuzo Abo in. Trojans finished. 10th in the Pac-12 conference a season ago. Idaho State, the basketball, needing a basket. Three-minute scoreless drought. O'Neal up with the right hand, bit too strong. Slacker tries to save it. He saves it right to Jackson Green, who lays it up and in. And during that play, we saw Jalen Shelley heading back to the locker room. Hopefully, he's okay and can return tonight. Talented freshman who was once committed to Arkansas followed Eric Musselman to USC. AG finds Thomas, swings it into the right corner. Abo off the dribble. And he travels. Second turnover on USC. We mentioned it pregame. Abo was really good from the three-point line against Chattanooga. 0 for 2 today. Potentially had a shot from beyond the arc there, but decided to start driving in. The Trojans haven't hit a triple. Darling pull up from the elbow. Can't get the roll out of bounds and back to USC. Mention how many new faces both of these teams have. Idaho State with 12 new players, USC with 16. They're both part of the 27 schools in the NCAA with at least 12 new players on their roster. And it's somewhat of the new age of college basketball. Inside AG in trouble to Slackert. The sharpshooter off the heel. Rebound tipped around and O'Neal controls for Idaho State. Isaiah Griffin, it's with Darling, lobs inside under the basket, Otten looks for help, O'Neal lines one up, connects. Second three ball of the game for Idaho State, and they trail by just seven. Yeah, left O'Neal open there just a little bit, and he got the shot off. Inside, Trojans can't get a bucket. Three minutes without a field goal for USC. Isaiah Griffin takes on Abo. Here's Darling, step back over Slacker, knocks it down. It's a four point game. Idaho State on an 8-0 run. Good shot there by Darling again. Only made one of his field goals against Arizona State. Abo from beyond the yard tries to respond. Rattles out. Ag the rebound in the corner. Thomas inside. Noling can't finish the layup. Tipped out, and it is Idaho State basketball with 7.51 to go in the first half. 8-0 run for the Bengals, they're within four. Here a lot on the bench right now with two fouls. There is Eric Musselman. Rare moment of peace for the USC head coach. Jackson Green skips it inside, O'Neal. Backs down Thomas up with the right hand, leaves it short, Thomas the rebound. USC in transition, trying to end an 8-0 run. Yates from the corner, halfway home, Bowie's out, loose ball on the floor, USC scoops it up. Cohen to Abo, to Thomas, 
Works inside, up with one hand, and it caroms home. And the Trojans with a much needed basket. First points of the evening for St. Thomas. Had missed his first two shots from the field. Trojans will look to get him going. And a foul on Noling inside. It's his first six-team foul. Next one puts Idaho State in the bonus. Trojans are already there. Seven minutes to go in the first half. USC looking to get off to a 2-0 start. Darling down the left side of the lane. His layup crawls over the rim and in. Darling with seven in the first half. Darling just a faster player than Josh Cohn who got switched onto him. Able to drive past him. Yates tiptoes down the baseline. Abo a three ball. Can't get it to go. Trojans 0 of 6 from long range in this first half. And Idaho State can make it a one possession game with a basket here. Darling dancing, turns, fades, got it again. Darling with nine in the first half and Idaho State within two. And again, we talked about a pregame uh, that as USC nearly misses a basket. Darling, the stats don't jump off the page in previous years, only 1.7 points per game. And now he's almost carrying this team on his back. Well, and a foul underneath on USC puts Evan Otten at the line, a chance to tie the game. A redshirt freshman from Redmond, Oregon. Did not score in the season opener against Arizona State. Got his first career basket earlier tonight. And he makes the first of a one and one. Has eight rebounds in this first half. And one more and a chance to tie. In and out, Cohen the board, and here comes USC. 13-2 run for Idaho State. Yates inside, flies to the rim and scores. Trojans needed a basket. They get one from the redshirt freshman from Washington. Now Idaho State looking for a response. Up top, Darling. Orchestrating the offense. Sends it to the corner. Griffin, a three ball for the lead. Off the heel, offensive rebound for Idaho State. And then Yates commits the foul and Otten right back to the line. And it was near this point in the Chattanooga game that USC kind of let the mocks creep back. It was a two point lead for USC at the 8.15 minute mark. Now it's only a three point lead here with 5.24 left, but the Trojans did win by 26. They won comfortably, but they are up just two at the moment with 5.24 to go in the first half. All of a sudden, Idaho State has heated up. Started two of six from the field. They are five of their last nine as Otten again splits the pair. USC holds the lead. Yates again right to the basket. Wesley Yates with a couple of big baskets. And USC back up four. Yates now tied with Josh Cohen for the most points in a USC uniform with six. Darling drops it off O'Neal. Can't get it to go, and then another foul inside. Good block there by AG to stop the first shot from going off. But then he commits the foul, and that's his second. Take another look. Great drop off pass. And then just gets him on the arm. Jackson Green to the line. 
shot 71% from the stripe last year at Eastern Oklahoma. In Juco school. A lot of Juco players on this roster for Idaho State. Now, Green just one of several. Jake O'Neill another, so was Isaiah Griffin before he transferred a couple of years ago. Trojans up two, Yates to Abo. Wesley Yates gets it to Cohen, looks on the smaller defender, and a turnover but a foul. Jake O'Neill really upset with that call, but from our angle here, it did seem to slap the arm there. Just his first, but sends the Trojans to the line. Yeah, very clearly gets the right arm of Matt Noling. So a one and one for Noling. Shot it at 61% last season. And he misses the free throw. So Idaho State with four and a half minutes to go in the first half, a chance to tie or take the lead. O'Neal works on Abo. Up with the right hand and in. All even at 25 here in this first half. Into the corner, Yates knocks it down. First triple of the day for USC. And Wesley Yates the third with nine points in the first half to lead all scorers. Again, with how veteran dominant this lineup is, surprising to see one of the younger players leading the team in scoring. And an offensive foul, Jackson Green, the illegal screen, sends us to a state. And he's shooting three for four from the field. So a tough shooting day for him against Arizona State, but really starting to turn it on, especially in this latter half of the first half. Now he said he was hoping to be the Pac-12 most improved player a year ago. Got hurt three games into the season, but now making an impact for Idaho State. They're down by three, USC has the basketball. And Wesley Yates has done much of the scoring as of late for the Trojans. He has it here. Works inside, tries to dump underneath, and the Trojans turn it over. When you have a team that plays as fast as USC, that's bound to happen. This pass is going awry behind a player who's trying to run. Meza with the basketball for the Bengals. Transfer from Wofford. O'Neal, up top for Griffin. Double team shows. Three ball on the way for Daberko, doesn't go. And then Idaho State just has to heave. Meza almost got it to go. And then O'Neal the foul on the rebound and it sends Noling to the line. An interesting sequence there. Could have been disaster for USC if that one had gone, but now the Trojans get the foul and get to the free throw line. Trojans are three of eight from the stripe so far. Noling contributing to that struggle, 0 for two so far. And he's 0 for three. Bad miss there, very, very short. Didn't even get on top of the rim. And Noling has been such a contributor. He's played well tonight. Just two points, but has been a solid defender. And he makes his first free throw of the night, and USC leads by four, 29-25. 2.55 to go in the opening half. Griffin to Darling. Back in. Taking on Thomas. 
Looking to get it back to Darling, and he's fouled by Wesley Yates. Eric Musselman upset at that foul call. Wesley Yates did touch him. And now St. Thomas having to hold back his head coach to make sure he doesn't get a foul called on him. The USC coaching staff having a chat. Bianca Burns. Darling to the line, and he makes the first. 10 points tonight for Darling. Musselman still having a conversation with the official. Now Musselman not happy. Wasn't a lot of contact, but Darling makes both. Back to a two-point game. Thomas skips it. Cohen the fake inside and scores. Cohen had a very strong start to the game, has quieted down a little bit, and maybe those two points will start to heat him up. Darling to the rim, tough finish. Dylan Darling putting on a display. He has 13 in the first half. There's a career high of eight points for him against Arizona State, already beating that. Into the corner, Elohim, three ball, connects. And gives a kiss to the Idaho State bench there. Showing off some flair. The true freshman from Sierra Canyon and a foul underneath on Noling. And who's heading back to the line but Dylan Darling. Eric Musselman again incensed at that call. Kick out and there's Elohim. Nothing but net. And you see that little bit of a kiss towards the Idaho State bench there. Freshman playing with passion. It's his second basket of the day. USC's actually hit their last five field goals, but Dylan Darling helping keep Idaho State in the ball game. He has 15 in this first half. Nearly doubling up his career high in the first half. St. Thomas finds Cohen for USC. Back inside, Cohen slapped, and he gets two free throws for it. Great passing there from Thomas and Cohen, forcing a lot of switching from Idaho State and drawing the foul. Just a little too much contact there by Bergen. And Cohen to the line. Right, he makes the free throw. Abo comes in. Yates checks out. One more for Cohen. Makes the pair. USC by five. Now up to 10 points on the evening, leads the Trojans in scoring. And he's been excellent inside. Idaho State hasn't shown anyone who can stop him. Trojans haven't had anyone who can stop Dylan Darling. Now the true freshman Elohim guarding him. Almost turned over, and then a foul on USC. It's on Nuling, and that is his third. Eric Musselman yet again screaming at the officials. The entire coaching staff off the bench. Now let's take a look. It was a bad pass. Nuling got a hand on it. Bergen just tries to stop him, and thoughts on that, Thomas? Nuling does have a hand on his back, but I feel like there are just two players trying to run and grab the ball. I understand the call. Don't necessarily agree with it though. And neither does Eric Musselman still having words with the officials. As Bergen knocks down the first, Slacker comes in. Matt Noling checks out with three fouls. So Claude, Yates, 
AG and Noling, all with multiple fouls for the Trojans. For Idaho State, Bergen, Green, O'Neill, and Hollenbeck with two fouls. So there have been a lot of fouls in this first half on both sides. Yeah, and we talked about a key to the game for USC is limiting Idaho State at the free throw line, but the Bengals doing a good job. 12 for 14 at the charity stripe, and USC six for 12. It's a much better mark than they had a couple of minutes ago, but a 50% mark at the free throw line won't play too often. They've hit five more field goals than Idaho State, but Idaho State 12 of 14 from the line. You mentioned where USC is shooting six of 12. So foul trouble will be a storyline to look at as we head down, as we will have to look at Eric Musselman's conversations with the officials. Very energetic guy, the new head coach for USC. I'm frustrated early. So USC up by three. Close in on a minute to go in the first half. St. Thomas swings it to the corner. Elohim gets slacker, cutting. Abo up to Cohen. Looking for a friend. Slacker curls inside to Thomas. Thinks about it. Loses the handle. And a foul on Darling and it's his second. Now we see the Shot clock will go back up, but USC would have hoped for a second possession in this half. Might not be able to get it depending on these free throws. Now we'll have to see. They might have time. Depends on how Idaho State works on their possession. Might be Idaho State who gets a two for one opportunity if they go quick as St. Thomas misses the free throw. Starting to become contagious. Trojans back below 50% at the free throw line. And Thomas misses both. He was an 87% free throw shooter last season at Northern Colorado. It must be something at Galen Center. The Trojans have struggled at the charity stripe for multiple years. And Elohim a bit too aggressive. He undercuts Quentin Meza. And so Meza heads to the line. And a chance to make it a one point game again. 13 first half fouls on USC, 12 on Idaho State. And both teams have been in the bonus for a while. Only 31 seconds left in the half, but it will continue for the rest of this first frame. Meza knocks down the first. Foul went on Elohim, just his first. Meza rattles home both. One point game here with 31 seconds to go. USC can essentially hold for the final shot. One second differential between shot clock and game clock. Do they look inside for Josh Cohen? It's Thomas at the commands. Bergen picks him up. Thomas looks inside, it is Cohen who scores. Five seconds to go. Here comes Meza, one final heave from half court off the top of the backboard. And that does it in half number one. USC led by double digits at one point, but Idaho State has closed the advantage. 38-35, USC up by three at the end of one. We'll be back for halftime right after this on Big Ten. Second half, ready to get started. The USC band in the building. 
Let's see uh, the saxophones. Always love listening to the Trojan Marching Band, one of my favorite things at USC sporting events. They seem more comfortable off camera than on camera. As we get the second half started, Idaho State the basketball. Down by just three. Darling with it. Swings it to Griffin. He tries a contested triple. Not that time. Hit one to start the game. He's 0 for 4 since Elohim. Kicks it, Abo to Thomas. Thinks about it, doesn't take it, dumps inside. Touch pass back to Abo. Trojans moving the ball quickly. Haven't found the shot they want. This time, Thomas lines it up right down the well. Trojans had great team movement there. Great touch on the ball, great passing. That was a perfect possession if you're USC. And able to get a really good look for St. Thomas who has five points and a quick foul on Elohim. And that's his second. Elohim out there playing as you would expect a freshman to with a lot of energy. But sometimes energy can lead to fouls like that one. Fourth Trojan in the last couple years from Sierra Canyon. Obviously everyone remembers Brawny last season. Kajani Wright was here for a couple seasons as well, and then a walk-on Zach Brooker came from Sierra Canyon. And now Isaiah Elohim. He has Dylan Darling. Seven on the shot clock. Darling off the dribble, kicks it. Great pass. Griffin the finish and the foul. Unfortunate foul there from Cohen trying to get the block from behind and just seems to hit either his arm or shoulder. So we'll get another look. Nifty move from Dylan Darling. And Griffin good on the free throw, back to a three point game. Griffin with six in this one. Darling picks up his second assist. Elohim. Gets it to Abo, over to Claude, who sat most of the first half with two fouls. The Trojan point guard goes to work, finds Elohim, air ball too strong. There's Thomas on the cleanup. And not many people expected Josh Cohen to be leading the team in scoring at halftime. We'll see if St. Thomas can try to creep back. He's up to seven points. Already five points here in the second half. Griffin has it poked away. It stays USC, it stays Idaho State basketball. Still a good defensive play there from St. Thomas to poke it out. Elohim nearly just committed another foul. That was close. Darling with it, they're showing a double team on Dylan Darling. A lob inside, Otten can't handle it, and back to USC. That was a lob from a long way out. Trojans playing with some energy that we saw in the early parts of the first half. That's when USC was playing its best. And playing quickly. Claude to the rim. A bit too strong on the lay-in. Abo can't follow. And O'Neal with it for Idaho State. They're out and running. Inside and another foul, Holland back to the line. Claude upset with that one. He thought he went straight up. And it's Claude's third team, it's third personal foul, third team foul on USC. Here comes Wesley Yates to check in. Imagine Claude will head back to the bench. And we still haven't seen Jalen Shelley return from what seemed to be a leg injury in the first half. Try to see if he's sitting on the bench. It seems he is. First free throw goes for Hollenbeck. Claude heads out. Hollenbeck, the minute state transfer, rattles the second one in. Actually started his career at North Dakota College of Science. Now at his third school. Yates tries to dish inside. Almost turns it over, Elohim. Back to Yates. 
pull up jumper. Ripples the rope and USC up by five. Not only did Yates hit down the shot, but he saved that possession from USC getting on the floor. A lot of Trojans hitting the deck to save possessions for the Trojans. Now USC played better when they were out in transition, getting stops in that first half. Idaho State started to make baskets though, and it makes it tough. Darling to the rim, and an offensive foul. Good thing for USC that foul was called as Dylan Darling was driving towards the basket. A couple of Trojans behind him definitely would have had the foul called on them. Goes on Otten, it's his second. Just the first of the half for Idaho State. USC looking to extend the advantage. Thomas, tough fadeaway, in and out. Cohen offensive board and one. Now this is an important spot for USC. A lot of and ones in the first half that the Trojans did not convert. We'll see if Josh Cohen can change that storyline here. And Cohen to the line for one more. Take another look. The offensive board, the second chance points. And USC leading by eight now after the free throw. Largest lead of the second half. Josh Cohen has three offensive boards so far today. Inside, and his jumper from just inside the free throw stripe goes. Much needed basket for Idaho State. He's one of these free throws. He will double up his career high. Again, a small sample size, hasn't played a ton in his college career. It's still an impressive performance from him. He's made an impact for Idaho State, but he's off on the first. First miss from the line today. One more from the stripe. See the UNC six point lead. Hits the second. It's a five point advantage. And now 16 points on the evening for Darling. That has been a really impressive day for him. AG looking for Abo instead. Elohim has it. Yates trickles down the baseline. Deflected out of bounds. It stays with the Trojans. USC in the second of a six game homestand. Lob to the top for Elohim. Longest homestand since 2020. Abo, contested three ball, rattles home. And it'll be important for USC to get him going from beyond the arc. He provided a bunch of the offense from range for the Trojans in their season opener. O'Neal to the cup. Off the mark, put back from Daberko. The Trojans two of three from downtown here in the second half. They were two of eight in the first. Yates with it. Here's Thomas into the corner. Yates lines it up a bit too strong. And O'Neal swoops in to take it for Idaho State. Darling spins inside and is kicked to the corner. Finds a couple empty seats. And a turnover on Idaho State. So Yates to inbounds, and here comes St. Thomas. USC has two of its leading scorers on the court now tonight in Cohen and Yates. Thomas, seven points, nine assists. With Claude on the bench, he's done a lot of passing for the Trojans. Abo thinks about it, takes it, can't make it. And that is just a tough shot to try to take. No movement, just pulled up. After he hit one here in the second half, Griffin inside, loses the handle, out of bounds. Another turnover on Idaho State, back to USC. 
And turnover number 14 from Idaho State on the evening. The Trojans only have four. And not a recipe success for success for the Bengals. Trying to pull off an upset. They haven't beaten a power conference team since 1986. As USC gives it right back. And on the other side, the Trojans have had some issues with non-conference games in the past couple of years. Last year, obviously, facing off against Gonzaga, Kansas State, it was, it was a tough schedule. But since the beginning of the last year, USC is 7-5 in non-conference games, including their season opening win this year. And some of that includes games like playing Oklahoma and Gonzaga. Other losses to UC Irvine, Long Beach State. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Darling to the cup, drops it off. And a foul inside. Holland Beck wanted the poster. Instead, he'll get two free throws. Even though Idaho State is losing, we've seen that a couple times where posters are near posters. Doesn't get it there for the Bengals, but that was really close. So Holland Beck to the line to shoot a pair. Makes the first. All of a sudden, a lot of attention focused on Darling, and it is allowing him to become a facilitator. Claude back in, Elohim checks out. And Holland back hits the pair. And it's a four point game. And we'll see if Claude can get it going again. The Big East most improved player last year. Only two points and three fouls on the evening. He's had to sit for a while with the foul trouble in the first half. Again in the second, Abo sends it to the top for Claude. Thomas swinging around the arc. Yates fakes it. Now he tries it, an air ball too strong. O'Neal the rebound. Here's Darling, and he's fouled by Yates. It has been a quick whistle tonight. And the Trojans already committing their sixth foul of the second half. Next one puts Idaho State in the bonus. And we see Eric Musselman arguing a little bit less on these foul calls because the one thing the referees have been is consistent with their use of the whistle. Bergen has Claude draped on him. Resets back to Darling. Dabber Co. the southpaw, can't get it to go, out of bounds, it stays Idaho State basketball. Both teams struggling to score from the field. Neither team has hit a field goal in the last two and a half minutes. But Idaho State trying to make it a one possession game. Dabber Co. sets the screen, Darling downhill. Drops it off, Green up and in off the window. And it's a one possession game once again here in South Central. Yates to Claude, to the corner. Abo, three ball, fouled by Green. And three big free throws. So we see Dylan Darling having to put his shoe back on, lost it in the fray there. So Abo to the line to shoot a pair. Trying to end a three minute scoreless drought. They're gonna check if his foot was on the line. Looks like he was behind the arc. And quickly reviewed and confirmed. So Abo with just three points tonight. Hits the first free throw. That one puts USC at 50% even on free throw shooting tonight. Eight of 16. So he hits the second. San Diego native started at Texas Tech, went to Boise State, now back home in Southern California. One more, and Abo makes all three. Five point game. Next whistle takes us to a break. Bergen wide open. Can't get it to go. Offensive rebound for Idaho State. 
Number eight on the day for the Bengals. Darling, swerving downhill. This time it's Griffin off the heel, Daberko offensive board. Darling, dancing, drops it off, Daberko's jumper knocks it down. Back to a three point game. Darling a very quick player and so the Trojans are having to collapse on him on defense. It leaves other Idaho State Bengals open. Up for Yates. Another three ball, well short. And a foul goes on Daberko. It'll stay with USC. When we come back, 11.08 to go in the second half. It's USC up by five, 54. But USC looking to hold them off. Trojans ahead, still plenty of time to pull away. As AG into the game, Cohen heads out. It's with Claude, takes on Daberko. And a quick foul on Daberko. Picked one up to send us to break, picks one up right back from the break. But it's just his second. Fifth team foul, however, on Idaho State. Trojans two fouls away from being in the bonus. Claude takes on Griffin to the rim and fouled on his way up. He was looking for a poster. Now three team fouls on this USC possession for Idaho State. That's something to keep an eye out for. Hollenbeck picks up his third. Claude, a 79% free throw shooter a season ago. Three for four in the opener. And he makes his first of the night. Just three points for the Xavier transfer. And hits the second as well. It was a really slow start at the free throw line for USC, but the Trojans starting to heat it up. Abo hit, has hit a couple here in the second half. Claude as well. Trojan six to six from the line. Darling down the right alley, skips it, corner three, knocks it down. Connor Hollenbeck. And there was another example of Darling making that play. Trojan defense trying to collapse on him as he starts driving, leaves other offensive players open. That was an open three look for Idaho State. Darling with five assists now to go along with his 16 points. Claude tries a step back, well short into the corner and out of bounds back to Idaho State. Just a two point game. Bengals a chance to tie or take the lead. You see Josh Cohen on the Trojan bench saying, dig in White, dig in. He knows this is an important possession for USC, only leading by two. Dabber Co. Sends it up top to Hollenbrook. They're looking for Darling. They find it with Darling. Double team shows, Daberko with it, turns, fires, in and out. And an over the back on Hollenbeck, and that is his fourth. Oh, take that back, they call it on O'Neal. But USC in the bonus, so free throws for the Trojans. I don't know where that is on O'Neal. I don't know if that was maybe meant to be on Hollenbeck, but Idaho State will take it. One and one, in and out. Abo can't hit the free throw. And still a two point game. Jackson Green, it's Darling. Dancing, step back. Well short, and A.G. the rebound. Trojans out and running. Thomas to Claude, and he's fouled by Green, and Claude will head to the line. Hit his first two attempts 
from the free throw line just a couple moments ago. It's another couple of opportunities for USC. And this is the backcourt that USC is excited about. Claude and Thomas. Claude has sat on the bench for much of this game with foul trouble, but see how dynamic they can be when both are in. And Claude off the mark on the first. Yeah, tall backcourt, Claude at six foot six, St. Thomas at six foot seven. Dylan Darling on the other side, Idaho State, he's not necessarily short at six foot one, but next to these two giant guards for USC, it's a little bit smaller. Problem is USC has had trouble staying in front of him. But he is certainly lacking in height. Holland Beck is in. Gets it to Otten, who gives to Darling. Griffin has it on the wing. Darling down the left alley to the rim, lays it in. Darling a very shifty player. A lack of size can give you that ability. He's really displaying it today. Abo from the wing, under nine minutes to go. It's a one point game here at Galen Center. Claude from the right wing into the corner, Yates, the fake, the three ball, a bit long. Darling climbs the ladder for it. And St. Thomas commits the foul and Dylan Darling to the line to give Idaho State the lead. Dylan Darling is seven for eight from the free throw line tonight. Take another look. And just a little bit of a push. 40 total fouls between the two teams now. For some context, in game one between USC and Chattanooga, there were 30 total fouls, and we still have 8.45 to go in the second half. Been a lot of whistles. Darling, a one and one, he makes the first. And a tie ball game here, Eli. Idaho State has continued to battle. Dylan Darling leading the way for the lead for Idaho State with 8.45 to go. And Idaho State with their first lead since the 18-21 mark of the first half. Scrappy basketball from the Bengals. USC will need to lock in if it helps to win. Yates turns it over. Darling helps pick up the steal. He has 20 points, five assists. And has helped Idaho State claw all the way back. Griffin finds Otten, gives to O'Neal, and it's back in the hands of Darling. Skips it, Otten. O'Neal steps through, floats it up, leaves it short. Thomas claims the rebound. Almost turns it over. Into the corner for Yates. Inside Cohen, up and in, and the Trojans back in front. Josh Cohen with 17, the lead USC. And a foul on Yates. That's his fourth, and it sends Idaho State to the line to regain the lead when we come back, one point game, but Idaho State right with USC here from Galen Center. Be right back on Big Ten Plus. Every season, we give it everything we have. There too. Has 20 points, five assists. And we see Clark Slackert coming back into the game for USC. He guarded. Dylan Darling earlier in this one, but when Slacker's on the court, USC is minus eight. Just a limited sample size. Griffin can't hit the front end of the one and one, and USC maintains its lead. Testing, testing. Abo finds Thomas. Trojans need a field goal in the worst way. 
It's Thomas testing, testing. working on Green. Backing him down, spinning inside. Can't get the layup. And Idaho State with the basketball down by one. USC just one of its last eight. And it's not Slackard guarding Dylan Darling, it's Desmond Claude. Darling skips it, Otten misses the layup, but he's fouled by Abo. They call a block, and Otten to the line to shoot two. Eric Musselman just has his hands on his head. Cannot believe that was called a foul on Abo. Let's take another look. That is really close to a charge. They are such bang bang plays, but and that is awfully close. So Otten to the line, he's two for four from the stripe, one to tie, one to, two to take the lead. And he's off on the first. And Idaho State can settle to just tie if Otten makes the free throw. Every point will matter down the line. Three straight misses from the line for Idaho State. And USC still up by just one. The Bengals were very strong in the first half in free throw shooting, have slowed up a bit in the second frame. That side of the court has been a free throw problem for both teams. Slacker to Cohen, eyes it, tries it, doesn't get it to go. Darling the rebound. Turns on the Jets to the cup, blocked out of bounds, or not out of bounds, but Cohen with the rejection. O'Neal to Darling. And it was Slackard guarding Darling that time. He was able to keep the pace with the point guard of Idaho State. Darling inside, drops it off, up and in. Isaiah Griffin puts Idaho State back in front. And Slackard wasn't guarding Darling on that possession. They want to go with a bigger defender, but Dylan Darling, six assists now on the night. Slacker, floater inside, doesn't get it to go. O'Neal the rebound. Under six to go. Idaho stayed up by one. It's Darling. Tries to get it to Griffin, deflected. Griffin, pull up from the baseline, off the mark, down goes Green, and that foul on Slacker, and it sends Jackson Green to the line. And they're gonna take a look at this. Wonder if they're gonna look for a hook and hold. See, it was Slacker guarding Jackson Green there, who's six foot seven. Slacker is six foot one. I don't see why you have him on the court if you're not gonna have him guard Dylan Darling, who's also six foot one. And the ref just told Eric Musselman right in front of us looking for that hook and hold. We'll take a look. Thomas, thoughts? It, I, it looks like it. He has that left arm wrapped around Jackson Green. I, I think they caught him there. And that's a new rule, relatively new in terms of college basketball. Not last year, but a couple years ago. As they want to get rid of those type of injuries and take a look at Caleb Martin, who's in the building. A former I see thought they might be shooting free throws. Are they shooting free throws? Clark Slacker standing at the line right now. And in fact, it's a flagrant foul on Jackson Green. Well, I guess that's why you have Clark Slackard at six foot one guarding at six foot seven Jackson Green. And instead of Idaho State shooting free throws and potentially taking a three point lead, Clark Slacker makes two and gives USC the lead. And the Trojans get possession too. An important call there. Huge call. Can the Trojans use it to change the momentum with five and a half to go?
Cohen. Gives to Claude. Takes it inside, lays it in. USC back up three. From trailing by one to being up by three now in just a matter of seconds. Four point swing for the Trojans. They get it to Darling. Tries to spin away from Claude and Cohen inside. Daverko fouled by Cohen. He is incensed. I mean, we'll have to take another look at that, but from our angle, seemed like a good call from the officials. There it is inside. I don't know, Thomas. That looks like a lot of basketball. I do see the hand coming down on his arm. I see it going both ways, obviously not going in favor of USC though. Otten, who just missed a pair, makes the first. Idaho State just nine of 13 from the line in this second half. They were better in the first. Another miss by Otten, but O'Neal helps force the ball out of bounds off of USC. Eric Musselman not happy with his team. He's really brought the energy back. Was more sitting on the bench in the first part of the second half, but he's back out of his seat now. So two point game. Holland Beck finds O'Neal. It's with Darling. Idaho State looking for the biggest win in almost 40 years. Darling inside, can't make the layup. Claude the rebound. USC on the break, up ahead for Thomas. Loses the handle and it hits the underside of the backboard. Out of bounds in Idaho State basketball. Seemed like St. Thomas got pushed in the back on that play, but no foul called. Ended up diving into the cameraman there. Dangerous possess, uh, position being a cameraman at a live sporting event. Now we appreciate all our camera people helping put this production together, our entire production crew here at Big Ten Plus. Idaho State still down just two. Darling picked up. Sends it to O'Neal. Steps through, feeds, Daverko ties it with the jam. Timeout, Idaho State. Jake O'Neal, great fake out to draw two defenders. And Daberko gets the slam down. All even at 63 with 4 0 That last bucket by Idaho State to tie the game. The slam from Otten. And we are all even at 63. Under four minutes to go. USC the basketball. Abo works the baseline and fouled by Griffin. Just his second. Now, no matter the result of this game, I think USC fans might be disappointed. Idaho State, not the greatest of programs, but these two teams are very similar. A bunch of newcomers and just a bunch of unknowns for both squads. We'll be right back, 63-63, but Chabuzo Abo to the line to give the Trojans the lead when we come back. What makes the Big Ten so big? For starters, it's 18 of the country's most iconic universities. It's the Bend the Rock, Jump Around, and the biggest bass drum on earth big. It's a stadium so big. They had the name at the Big House. Go Blue. It's dotting the I big. Let's go Bucks. It's all-time leading score big. And now that USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington have joined the party, it's feeling real big. Right, Matt? I'm ready. Fight on. Boys up, baby. Let's get it. Go dog. Nah, it's all about the O. The Big Ten Network. This is big. All even at 63 with 3.43 to go in the second half. Eric Musselman trying to help lead the Trojans to a win. There's the foul 
That sends Chibuzo Abo to the line. This is right where Thomas Idaho State found themselves against Arizona State. Five minutes to play, they were down 45-44. They would fall 55-48. Arizona State would go on a 9-4 run to finish things out. Idaho State hoping for a different fortune tonight. And the Trojans had a really strong second half against Chattanooga in their season opener but have not really been able to turn it on in this second frame. Idaho State actually leading in the second half 28 points to USC's 25 to erase the Trojans' slim three-point halftime lead. So Abo can give USC the lead. They've been a lot better from the line in the second half. Nine of 11 so far. In the first half, they went Six of 14. On the other side, Idaho State has had 30 chances at the line, knocking down 23 of them. And they were 14 of 16 from the line in the first half, just nine of 14 in the second. Side USC is shooting on, not necessarily because of it, but has been a lot better for both teams tonight. Not necessarily linked, but Abo off on the first. One more to give UNC the lead. And he does just that. 64-63. 3.40 to go in the second half. And Idaho State down just one. It's with Darling. Skips it inside. O'Neal battling. Up, under, and in. And Idaho State back in front. 65-64. A good move there on that basket. Dancing a little bit under the net and finding a shot angle. Claude to the corner. Slacker, three ball for the lead. He is fouled by Otten. And it's the fourth on Otten. Second foul on a three-point shot by Idaho State. Watch it again. Otten tries to close out. And that right leg connects with Clark Slackard as he makes the first free throw. An 82.5% free throw shooter last year. Now three for three on the evening with two more chances. Hits the second. USC back in front. A chance to make it a two point lead. In and out. Otten, Cohen, time, or make that O'Neill and Cohen. Time out, Idaho State. Heads up play by O'Neill. Just a 30 second break. And we will keep it right here. Three minutes to go. And USC up just one. And a really nice play by O'Neill to get that timeout in, Thomas. Slacker misses the free throw. Josh Cohen nearly gets it over. But you're right, that timeout call, a veteran move. Cohen wanted the travel call. You saw him motioning for that. O'Neal, the transfer from the College of Idaho, where he actually started off as a golfer. Multi-sport athletes. Then played basketball and, or actually started off as a golfer at Boise State. Transferred to the College of Idaho to play both. And now at Idaho State, focusing on basketball, and he turns it over. Was looking for Darling on the back cut. Couldn't find him. Turnover uh, number 15 on the day for Idaho State. And USC the basketball up by one. Cohen. Drives inside to Thomas. Cohen has it tipped, able to regather. 
into the wing for Slacker, Abo. Backing down. Double team shows. Cohen, pump fake, pull up, knocks it down. And USC up by three. Smart decision there by Cohen to not take the three ball. Get just a little bit closer, still had a rattle at home. Idaho State down three. Darling. Inside. Offensive foul inside on Hollenbeck. Not only is it another turnover, that's the end of his day. Foul number five. And you see he was guarding Clark Slackert. So now twice Slackert has drawn a major foul. This one is sending the six foot seven Holland back to the bench. Bergen comes in to replace him. A bucket here for the Trojans would give them a two possession lead with under two minutes to go in the fourth. Cohen, knifes inside, into the corner, Slackert a three ball. Not that time. And Darling with it. Up ahead, O'Neal lays it in, and it's back to a one-point game. You usually see the Trojans working well in transition, but it was the Bengals who capitalized. Under 90 seconds to go. Claude weaves, tries to feed Cohen. Claude able to get it back. He sends it to Abo. Thomas poked away, and it stays USC basketball. With 1.14 to go, and with under two minutes, they can take a look, and they will. Jake O'Neal instantly, at the end of that play, started twirling his finger around, wanting another look at it. Again, an important call here. Only 74 seconds left. Absolutely massive because if Idaho State gets the ball back, they can take the lead with a basket. I don't know if Otten ever touches the ball. I think I'm going to agree with you there, Eli. I'll try to get another look at that one, but I think it just got it jostled. Is really close. But absolutely huge for USC. Good job by the officials taking a long look at that one, but I think they got the call right. So eight on the shot clock. 1.14 to go, Trojans lead by one. A lob up to the top. O'Neal tries to take it away. Loose on the floor with five. Abo looks inside, he pulls up off the heel. O'Neal the rebound. One minute to go, and Idaho State is down just one. Darling works on Claude, pull up for the lead, off the mark, out of bounds, Idaho State basketball, they will take another look. The call on the court was Bengals ball, but the referee who made the call instantly called for a review from my seat here. It made it seem like it did go off of Idaho State. This is gonna be a really tough one to tell. I mean, there is a lot of hands in there. It and looks like it's Idaho State's Jake O'Neill who touches it last. That left hand might still have a touch on the basketball. They're gonna have to slow it down. Man, that is hard to tell. Now, so two calls in the final two minutes that are really important to the game. The Trojans weren't able to capitalize off of the one that they earned. See if they get the call again here. Now, Neil does a nice job fighting. I I think that left hand of his spins it out of bounds, but. That was an even harder angle to tell. From that first angle we saw, it did look pretty clear that O'Neal's hand, you're right, it was his left one, 
would have been the last to touch it. But they're taking a long. St. Thomas loses the mask now. He'll play, seemingly, the final 46 seconds without his mask. Sometimes that really is just a comfort thing. He has the basketball. 45 seconds to go. Fans USC on their feet. Up one. Bergen has Thomas. Cohen sets the screen. Thomas inside. What a read by Griffin to recover. Abo was cutting for what could have been an easy layup. Out of bounds, it stays USC basketball, 11 on the shot clock. Into Cohen, 10 on the timer. Claude. They get it to Thomas. Three ball in the air, bullseye! USC by four, 15 seconds to go. Darling to the rim, blocked out of bounds by Cohen. 11.8 to go, but it's a two possession game. No mask, no problem for St. Thomas on that shot. What a bucket. Idaho State needs a basket and quickly on the floor, Darling to the rim, lays it up and in with 4.5 to go. Timeout, Idaho State. They have one to go, four and a half left, and we will keep it here. The biggest shot of the night from St. Thomas. Put him up to 10 points. One of three USC players in the double digits. But what a huge shot from the Northern Colorado transfer. The biggest shot of the game. And now USC will need to inbound and make their free throws to potentially hold on against a scrappy Idaho State team. And who other than St. Thomas, he projected to be one of the best players on this squad after his great year at Northern Colorado. Again, 19.7 points per game. Only has 10 today, but he has the ability to make shots like that. Now he has broken Idaho State's heart before at Northern Colorado, 28 points and a two point win. That three ball put USC up by four over Bergen. USC only five for 20 from three point range. And this one, that's 25%. But St. Thomas has gone two for two with his shots from range. Everyone else is three for 17. Four and a half to go, and USC has to inbound and then make the free throws. St. Thomas to trigger it in. Abo, Claude, Yates, and Slackert on the floor. Into Slacker. Fouled immediately, 3.7 on the clock. Slacker four for five from the free throw line. So far tonight, the Trojans wanted to get it into his hands. Besides Thomas, the best free throw shooter on this USC team from a season ago. Two free throws to likely do it. And the first is up and in, it's a three point game. Trying to make it a two possession game. And Elohim will check in for Slacker if he makes the second. Eric Musselman doesn't want a foul on a three point shot. Slacker to make it a four point game, he does. And Idaho State likely out of time. They'll need a miracle, 3.7 to go. But USC up by four. Just don't foul on a three-point shot. That's the message here. Yates takes it away, fouled with 1.8 to go. And that likely is 
all for Idaho State. Dylan Darling came up a little bit slow after that collision, but a great defensive play there from the Trojans. So Yates to seal it. Hits the first five point game. And USC will hold on. Yates makes both, six point game. Bergen, one final heave. Idaho State gives USC all they can handle, but the Trojans survive and they win it 75-69 here at home. What an impressive second half from the Trojans. And it was the free throws that was the difference. USC 16 for 20 in the second. Mm -hmm. Looks like there was a bit of a miscommunication there on the Lady Lions side. They had two runs to the near side corner. Kind of bringing in that extra pressure. a disruption and Canisius will inbound with Santoro. Canisius team, they lost their top 10 scores from last year. They only have three returners from last season's squad. 12 new players, six freshmen, six transfer. And that skied a little too high off the glass from Whitford. And stayed up ahead to Elliott. She'll pull up from the baseline. Left it a little too strong, but Rust is there for the rebound. And Rust gets the bucket and one. For Cam Rust, how's that for your first collegiate bucket? That's something the Lady Lions have really changed in this matchup compared to their competition on Mondays. On Monday, Bucknell's bench was outscoring the Lady Lions bench, but tonight <laughs> they're already at 14 bench points. And just, as you said, Casey, nine, over nine, maybe now 10 scores on the roster. Rust becomes the 10th Lady Lion to score tonight. It's her first collegiate bucket, but can't make it a three point play as she too much behind the free throw. The Griffiths bring it up, Ray Beneda guarded tightly by Campbell. Sonoma from the wing trying to direct traffic. As Rust on her, Campbell right there for another steal. Allie Campbell trying to turn defense into offense and she'll draw the foul. Allie Campbell strong take to the cup as she was working against Franco Wittenberg. And she'll get a chance to try and pay it off in the charity strike. See here in the replay, Whitford just wasn't able to get that far foot set in stone, allowing it to be a foul on her instead of a charge. Graduate player started her career at Notre Dame. She has had injuries played each of the last three seasons. She was able to play most of last year after getting hurt the season over. This was the season prior to that, and Coach Carolyn Keegan is very happy to have her back healthy. And she said simply, look, when Alec Campbell is on the court, we're a better team. Do, do, do. Really any position one through four this year. They want to play her a little more point guard this season for Penn State. And she has in the past. She's got a very high basketball IQ. She knocks down both free throws there. It's 43 to 15 in favor of Penn State. Closing in on the halfway mark of quarter number two. Bird matchup on Santana. Get it inside Sonogo. Nice feed to Miriam Sonogo.